Hey guys, welcome back. Luca here. And today I want to talk about what don't they tell you about working at Google. And maybe some of the things that I wish I knew prior to joining. But starting off, I think when I first got my offer from Google, I didn't know what to expect. I just thought, oh perfect, now I get to work on all these sorts of things. And of course, coming out of college, I actually didn't really understand. A company can have different divisions, different departments. And once again, Google is a giant company. For example, you have Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Maps, the Google search team, the, the YouTube team. There's just so many options. So you, you have to really make sure that you are aware of all these things because like you might be ending up in a product that you never heard of, but that's a part of Google. So that's something that I kind of wish I knew more and did more research about. No, so Google is a very big company. There are different products. A lot of times when they first hire you, there's something called the team matching phase. And for a lot of people, this applies less so to entry level. So if you get hired straight as an entry level out of college, the team matching is a guaranteed process. They will try to match you with the team. However, for internships or even or more junior level roles that's out of college, then there is the team matching phase where you got the offer from Google, but you're not guaranteed to work unless you are matched with the team. So this means there's another additional round of interview that they don't really tell you about where you are actually being interviewed a little bit by the team that you might be interested in joining. One thing I wish I knew is, sure, like working at Google is amazing, but it doesn't mean like, oh, you should be open to working at any teams. Because like sometimes what you enjoy doing is actually very important. If you don't enjoy infrastructure work and that's the only team available to team match, it might be better off to just wait because the Google offer, they do, val they do stay valid for a year, meaning they can still hit you up and you can still team match within that year and still have the offer being valid. So I would say have more patience because I fall into the same trap. I initially thought like, oh, if I don't get matched, like, you know, I'm not going to be able to start. Like, I won't be able to join my team. So I pretty much just accepted whatever that came my way. I was like, okay, it's better to start than not. But it's actually very important to take a step back and just really reflect on the type of work that you enjoy doing. And this is something that I wish I knew prior to joining, like making sure to not settle for something that you might not enjoy as much or align with your skill set. And next thing that I found out while working here is the fact that there are high performing teams, but there's also like slower performing teams. A lot of time, even if the team is high performing, it doesn't necessarily mean you have a lot of room for growth. Because if you think about it from a company's perspective, they don't really want to promote you. A promotion doesn't justify a huge improvement in the overall contribution for the product area. It's very stable, then it might be less likely for a very fast rate of promotion because they don't necessarily see a need in that. But whereas if you are in a product area where it's the top company's top focus priority and the company really care about this field, or for example, some of the core product that generates the revenue, then these teams have the metrics to back up and maybe and help you get to that next level promotion a lot faster than some of the other more mature that teams that being around for a longer time. So yeah, it's very easy to assume like, oh, it's Google, it's an amazing company. Like it doesn't really matter which team I'm on, like I will reach my career goal. If my goal is to get promoted, then some team are actually better aligned to achieve that than some other teams. So definitely be aware of this or ask the right question to the manager. But like I said, a lot of times you feel nervous about asking these questions before you commit to the team. But I would say like definitely ask those questions if you really care about it. So leading to my next discussion, team switching, it's easy, but also not very easy. So there is a strict policy of you have to be on your current team for one year before you can switch to another team. And your current rating on that team can actually impact if you can switch to another team. Meaning if you are a top performer, sure, like it makes a lot of sense for another team to take you on. But let's say like you don't really like your work and you don't really get like a very great review or just, a, or just meets all then another team might not necessarily want to take you on as much if they have other better candidates that they are considering. And if you come in as a junior level, it's also very limited of the number of open options that you could consider switching into. That's why I say it's very important that the first team you join will hopefully be the team that you like and at least get good rating and get promoted before you consider switching. Because another thing you have to be aware is once you do switch team, 
you are kind of reciting a lot of these progress you have made onboarding learning a lot of the old tech stack and you have to migrate into whatever the new tech stack might be it delays your impact and maybe at the end of the year the next review like your review rating might not be as high because you made this switch so that's also something that you have to be aware of yeah i would say like a lot of times it's very easy to assume uh google is such an amazing company like i'm just gonna switch teams if i don't like it because that's like how they <laughs> make it seem like but that's not always the case so you have to be aware and the last thing that is very unique to google i think is the fact that they expect you to write code but they also expect you to write really good design docs not many other companies have this much of a focus on design docs and a lot of times if you want to get promoted to the more senior level roles what they really want to look at is how good it's your design doc how much detail what is the difficulty of the task and how complex, what alternatives have you considered? What are some of the caveats? They really want to look at your design doc and see all these proofs. And they also want to look at how many of these design docs that you have wrote. So a lot of times doing performance review, what they want to see you link are these design docs. And when they go to the promotion committees to review if you are ready for promotion, design docs are one of the first thing they review. They want to look at all your design docs and see what you have done. I think this is something that's actually very unique because like cause I thought like you know as a programmer like as long as we can write really good code like you know build really good features like that's enough but clearly like at Google in particular like you also have to be able to write very smooth very clear design docs that explain your approach that explains what you're doing so if you do leave the team some engineers that comes on can read your design doc and know exactly what you did and what they need to do next so yeah these are some of the things that i wish i knew before joining google and some of the things that they don't really tell you about and i hope this video was helpful so feel free to let me know what you think all right guys thank you so much for watching and make sure to like comment and subscribe i will see you guys next time